Hello and welcome to Your Damn Jets. Um, today I want to talk about the Fire Stick 4K, Fire TV Stick 4K Max. Um, I got one yesterday and I already have uh, quite a bit of uh, feedback about it. Um, my uh, upshot is that it is not a beta device like the Google TV is, but I wouldn't buy it unless I'm fixing a specific problem that I know that this device will fix on a TV. Um, and I'm going to explain later what I mean by that. So for me it's a do not buy unless you're fixing a real problem. There are a few things I like about the device. Uh, two things basically. Uh, I like the fact that it supports multiple profiles. Uh, it was easy to set up a profile for me and my wife um, and kudos for the engineers to, for supporting that. I don't know why Google doesn't support it. I think it is stupid on Google's uh, part, but there we are. Um, the remote also is better than Google's remote. It has more buttons and I think Google just went too far into the direction of simplifying their remote. Uh, for no good reason, as far as I'm as I'm seeing it, uh, maybe it's the influence of Apple. I don't I don't think it's good uh, to simplify too much. Uh, I'm equivocal about the fact that the Fire Stick device does not have a consolidated a consolidated watch list, and by consolidated watch list, you have to understand. People who don't work with Google probably don't know what it is, but a consolidated watch list is that you can pick any show that the device supports, a show from Netflix, a show from Hulu, a show from HBO Max, and put it in your watch list. And the watch list is going to remember where the show came from. So you go back to your consolidated watch list and you click on the show and it's going to start the right service. And for me, when that works fine, that's absolutely great because I don't like having to remember. Otherwise, what I would do is, you know, I would, oh, which, I want to watch this show, which service is it on? Oh yeah, that's on Netflix. Oh, this one is on Hulu, and this one is on that other service. And I find that annoying having to remember where the shows are coming from. Um, so the consolidated watch list, when it works, it's super great. Uh, but the problem and why I'm equivocal about it, and I'm not saying that it's a, that the Fire Stick TV is is bad compared to the Google TV in that respect, is that in theory the consolidated watch list is great, but in practice it doesn't work right on the Google TV, and so in the end we we have lately we've been watching shows, and I've had to manually start the app on the Google TV and to go watch the show because either the what I have in my consolidated watch list doesn't show the, the channel that I want to use or I chose a different channel. So it's just simpler to start the app and, and start the show that way than go through the consolidated list. So I make a vocal about it. It doesn't have a consolidated list but Google TV, in fact, does have the list, but it doesn't work right. So I, as far as I'm concerned, it's a wash. I'd really like it if they could get their act together and produce something like that. But apparently right now, no, but well, maybe there's some other product out there. Roku might do it. I don't know. I have no idea. Um, and now what I don't like. And there's a fairly long list of what I don't like. And I've been able to put that list together fairly quickly because I think of the experience with the Google TV, I knew what to look for. So it didn't take much time to find all the nits uh, with the uh, Fire TV stick. So one thing that I cannot do on it is reorganize my watch list. So then it, the watch list on Amazon, and I didn't go to the website to see if I could do it there, but in the app, it's impossible to organize my shows. So if there are shows that are coming back in two years, while well, they have to stay in the watch list if I don't want to lose them. Uh, and they take up space and sometimes, you know, I have to skip over them and it's just annoying. I wish the, the watch list would be, um, 
reorganizable. And that watch list is the same watch list as you have on Amazon. So it's Amazon's own watch list. And then you have the Netflix watch list and you have the Hulu watch list. And I'm not reviewing those apps, but they probably have the same problem that you cannot reorganize things in your watch list. Uh, there are no third party ratings on shows. So on Google TV, if you look at the show, usually you see the rating that uh, I think Rotten Tomatoes gave it. And it's a third party rating. It's not Google's rating. Probably Google, maybe Google's rating is visible somewhere, but it's not Google's own rating. It's from a third party service. On the Fire TV stick, you get Amazon stick. The, the Amazon stick, I mean the, the reviews of the show that you're looking at. So if somebody thought the show on Amazon was great and people wrote reviews, you're going to see the reviews and you're going to see the five star rating of that show, um, which is OK. But I would prefer to have reviews from a third party uh, because the Amazon ratings, sometimes uh, they're they're really off. Um, I've watched shows on Amazon that I thought were terrible and they had a five star rating or close to five star. Um, and then the, if you go see third parties, the rating is more adequate and uh, reflects more reality. So uh, that's some that's a, uh, a thumbs down for me in that regard. That I, I don't like that. Um, the interface is confusing. Um, if I press the button on something, there are times where it's gonna take me into the details of the show instead of starting the show. But it has happened at least once that I pressed on something and I thought, well, I'm going to see the details before going to see the show. And no, it took me straight into the show. Um, I don't know if it's the difference between the live shows and the shows that are, um, you know, available for for viewing uh, later. I, I have no idea how that works, but it's it is somewhat confusing. If you press the button, sometimes it's the details, sometimes it starts the show. Uh, uh, there's also there's also some confusion about when you can do a long press and when you can um, press the, the option button on the on the remote. Um, there's been times where I was trying to do to go into the option, so I did a long press and then nope, that doesn't work. Um, I find that confusing. Uh, the Alexa button, because this this uh, device comes with Alexa built in. And it's the first Alexa device we have in this house. All of our other devices are Google, not Alexa. So the Alexa button is also confusing. Uh, I was listening to music and YouTube, and I thought, well, I should try something to do with Alexa while I'm listening to music and YouTube. And uh, it was a long track of jazz music and just like kind of background music that is nice and relaxing. So I, I pressed the Alexa button and I said 30 to Fahrenheit and Celsius. And then what it did is it got out of the jazz video and started searching in YouTube for what I said. And then it gave me a bunch of videos about converting things between Fahrenheit and Celsius, which is not what I wanted. I wanted to know what 32 Fahrenheit would be in Celsius, and I know it's zero Celsius. Um, and that was confusing. And then I tried again later outside of YouTube when I was like on the main screen, I think, and I tried the same thing and then the same words, and then it worked at that time. So I don't know how the Alexa button works really. Uh, if you're in an app, maybe it's going to do a search in the app. If you're outside the app, then it's going to work on Alexa. But I know that I've tried another thing, which is turn on the lights. And I knew it wouldn't work, but I wanted to see what Alexa would say. And if I say turn on the light and I'm in YouTube and I say turn on the light and I uh, turn on the light and I'm outside of YouTube, it does the exact same thing. So when you say turn on the light, it recognizes that you're not trying to do a search, that you're trying to activate the device in your house. And it's going to respond to that and, it, and told me that it couldn't no, he didn't know what device to operate. And that's correct because I had not set it up for operating any device in my house. Uh, but um, now it's confusing. So if you say turn on the lights and you're in YouTube, it's going to understand that you want to activate the device and it's not going to search for turning on the lights. But if you say 32 Fahrenheit to Celsius, then it's going to search. I don't understand 
it, it's confusing to me how that works. Um, and I have to say on the Google side that I didn't, I could do the same thing with the Google side. I think I could press on the button and do just, um, you know, issue general uh, Google Assistant commands. I've not tried to do it because in this house, we're a Google house. So we have devices that are paying attention to us and, and listening. So if I'm in the living room, I don't need to press on the button on the remote to, to turn on a, a light or turn off a light. If I want to turn off the kitchen light, I, ju I just talk to Google and say, turn off the kitchen light, and it's going to turn off the kitchen light uh, because we have a, a device in the living room to listen to us. So I don't need to press the button to do that. And possibly people who have Alexa all around the house wouldn't have this problem. But I, you know, I was trying things with Alexa and I found that problem and that where it's confusing to know when Alexa is going to think you're doing a search and when it's going to think that you're going giving it a, a command. Um, and one thing I found particularly stupid that I saw in demonstrations of the product is that somebody was you know, they were saying things you can do with Alexa and they were taking the remote and pressing the button because you have to press the button for it to recognize your voice first. So you press the button and then the person was pressing the button and saying, pause. And then the video was pausing. And I thought this was the height of stupidity because you have a button dedicated on the remote to start and stop the stream. So you just press that button and it's paused. You don't need to press on the on the voice recognition and say pause and have the wrist that is not going to understand you and maybe not pause the video. So I think that's <laughs> the examples they give sometimes are are, are stupid. Uh, on the other hand, you know, the va the fact that it has voice recognition in itself is not stupid because I can imagine a scenario and I cannot replicate it in my house because I don't have Alexa all around the house. But I can imagine a scenario where where you know somebody takes you to the something takes you to the kitchen, and you don't you think it's gonna take like two seconds and you're gonna be back in front of the show, but it turns out to be more complicated. And then in the kitchen, you talk to the device that's there and you say, Alexa, please, you know, do that thing, and please pause the video, and it pauses the video. Um, so, yeah, so it is useful. It is useful to have the voice recognition uh, in some circumstances, but I, I just don't like press, press the Alexa button and say pause, like, no, just press the pause button, <laughs> idiot. Um, casting, I've, I've tried i've looked at the casting capabilities it's recognized automatically by chrome on my laptop and my uh, chromebook um, so you seem to be able to cast to it although i've seen uh, that it said that you can cast on certain sites uh, you know there was it was at the bottom under the the device name you can get cast on certain sites and for instance if i try to cast um, if I try to cast a random tab, if I'm in Google Docs and I try to cast to the device, it's not going to work. I, I, I am able to do it on, a, on other Google devices. Like if I want to do it on a Google TV, I can cast anything to the Google TV that that is on my laptop. But the Fire TV stick, I cannot cast to it if it is... Um, if it is not a site that it recognizes, and I'm guessing it recognizes mostly the, the sites like Netflix and HBO and Hulu and stuff like that. Uh, I haven't done the whole round over all the sites, but uh, it looks like it does what it does. Um, watching local channel is confusing. There are multiple ways to access the local channels. Uh, we do happen to have Paramount Plus, so we can in Par and in Paramount Plus, we do have CBS, and CBS, we can watch the local CBS channel that way. Uh, not that I particularly want to do that, but my, my wife likes to watch the local news, so 
we get through Paramount, we get the local channel. And then in the Fire Stick, there's another way is if you go into uh, the, the category news where it offers you the same channel. And it's confusing, uh, you know, what the relationship is between the two. It looks like if you go into news and you select the local CBS station and they're not currently showing news, it's going to show you reruns of the news because it's supposed to be news. So they're going to show rerun and, and they show you reruns that said previously recorded, but then there's no time or date on the screen. So you don't know it was previously recorded when, who knows? I probably you know the night before, if you're in a very early morning, it's probably the night before, but you don't really know when it was recorded, which I, it's to me, that's a problem. It's like, what prevents you from putting a date and a time on your on your rerun of the news? Um, I don't I, I don't get it. Um, Amazon is also more intrusive than I found Google to be on the Google TV. Uh, I mean, there's no secret here. The Google TV will show you different shows, will propose different shows. And those shows were selected by an algorithm. Um, and I don't know how that algorithm works. And I'm sure there's some payments involved and Google is making money over which shows that they decide to show to you. But Amazon felt more like we're we're Amazon. We're a we're a, a company that sells stuff, and we're going to sell you stuff. So there was uh, on the on the main screen there was a little play, place that says sponsored, and you know the the stuff that was shown there was not always shows. I think it and it depends on on what you were interested in, but it felt more direct like here's this thing for you to purchase and i also noticed if i'm on the local tv station and they're showing reruns um that during the ads for the local tv station they replace the station's ad with an amazon ad so it's going to be a product on amazon you can buy on amazon and i think i didn't do it but i think you can just click in the middle of the ad to go to that product. And I've never seen something like that uh, on Google TV. I don't know if it's possible that some people do get it. I, I've never seen that there. Um, but on Amazon, I do get that in, in my uh, in the live shows that I watch. If there's an ad in the live show, if you're watching something that has been pre-recorded, Game of Thrones or whatever you're watching these days, uh, The Witcher, there's no, I don't get any ads in those shows. I've never gotten any ads in those shows when I watch them on the, the specific provider's uh, app. Uh, there's no ad, period. So Google, uh, I mean, Amazon doesn't add ads to that. But if you're watching a show with as it already has as it can replace those ads with its own ads. Uh, and to me, that's more intrusive. Um, and the products that were suggested were not even stuff I'm interested in. <laughs> so it, there's no event and there's no advantage for me that I see if it's stuff that I'm not interested in anyway. Um, Another thing that I discovered, and this is more narrow because it depends if you like Formula One or not, but I do like Formula One and I do use to watch uh, Formula One racing. Um, you can cast, I can cast, oh, I went to the Formula One website and that's how I discovered that some things don't work, is you can you cannot cast from the, from the, from the Formula One website to the stick. Um, and for me, casting is my preferred way to access Formula One races because it has the least painful interface. I think the Formula One TV app is crap, all, all across. You go on the website, it's crap. You work to, through Google TV and cast it to Google TV, the experience is going to be crap. On the Firestick TV, they have a special app that you can install, which is the, the F1 TV app. This is an official app. It is also crap. 
So I can't cast it. I can't cast through my stick. Um, other problems with the with this app is that it requires a full password and login to uh, access the site in the app. So you're on. You have the little remote. Enter your entire password, sucker. Um, so that's a problem. Uh, Netflix. You try to do the same thing with Netflix. Netflix is gonna say, use a different device. Use your laptop. Log in onto our site and enter a code. Hulu will do the same thing. HBO Max will do the same thing. The F1 app doesn't do that at all. Um, and it's easier to do it this way because if you have to use a laptop to log into their site, then you have the whole keyboard and you probably have a password manager that manages your, the passwords for you. If you need to enter it on the little remote because the app doesn't allow you to do that, you know, hunt, hunt and peck. It's like tack, 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 tack. It takes five minutes to enter the damn password. Um, and also the timeline was messed up. I, I brought up a, um, the last race of the previous season just to have an idea of how it worked. And I it came on and I looked at the bottom of the screen, the line with the numbers. It was 15 minutes long. I did have the whole show there because I fast forwarded and I was able to get to the end of the race. So you have the whole show, but the numbers the numbers shown at the bottom are wrong. It managed to pass QA for some reason. So the F1 app for this stick is awful. Uh, I don't know how what's gonna happen with Formula One next season. I might not even watch it because the app is crap. Um, and also another thing I discovered is that, and again, this is narrow. If it, if you speak Norwegian or if you learn Norwegian or if you're interested in Norwegian, you're going to be disappointed. There is no NRK app for the Fire Stick, uh, the Fire TV Stick. Um, there is an app for the Google TV, and you know it it works just fine. I mean, it's not. I don't think the the that app is you know the be all and end all of all apps, uh, it works fine. Uh, but for the Fire TV stick, there is no NRK app. Now, you, I was able to access NRK by going online through the browser whose name I don't remember. And I was able to access it that way, but it is it is awkward because you're essentially controlling a browser with, with the remote. and. It doesn't have much intelligence I could discover there. Uh, it was hard to navigate and get to the right place and start the show that I wanted to watch. Uh, but I was able to do it. So ultimately, you can probably access it, but it's not it's not nice. So, so I'm going back to the start now, the upshot for me. I think this is a, comp a, a as complete a device as you can make it. I think there could be improvements to the device, but I've not encountered any bugs that were showstoppers. And I, com in comparison with the Google TV, you now the Google TV, I have to reboot it almost every day because of the communication problem between the device and the TV. Uh, I mentioned before the Google TV, if I, if I just start it, oftentimes, I will see the image come in and go out and come in and go out and come in and go out and then there's going to be digital snow and all kinds of things and if I'm lucky I still have access to the menus more or less and I can start I can reboot it and once it's rebooted it's fine um, and if I'm unlucky then I have to get up and uh, do a, a manual reset of the device uh, I haven't seen that on the Fire TV stick so far. And I'm thinking it probably won't happen. Um, so it's not a better device in my in my view. It seems to be finishing complete. But I wouldn't buy it unless I'm trying to fix a problem with the TV I have. And, I, and we have two TV in our house. We have a, a TV in the basement, which is older. And we have a TV in the living room, which is newer. And both TVs are LG TVs. And I don't remember the model numbers. 
I do know there's a problem with the TV in the basement because there's one app in particular that I cannot install there, there. And I don't remember which app it is. It's either Paramount Plus or HBO Max. I cannot, I just cannot install it on the TV downstairs. End of story. And I looked online and they say they don't list that TV as supported by the app. Um, and then I could see if you have a, a device like the Google TV or the uh, Fire TV stick, that would fix that. And I'm thinking of moving one of the devices downstairs to fix that problem. So we could watch the missing uh, service down there. So that's one way. That's one way you could fix problems. You can you buy a device like the Google TV or the Fire Stick, T, the Fire TV stick, and then you fix you fix the problem you have. That's the only reason I can see to, to buy that. Otherwise, um, I would be fine with what's built into uh, my TV. So the living room TV, for instance, we have access to all the apps that we want. Um, I'm not seeing any reason to buy a, a Fire TV stick. The only other thing you could do possibly is um, if you want to control it with Alexa, um, then it, it might make sense to buy that. If you already have a, an Alexa home, you buy it to control it with Alexa. I don't know if you can, I, I'm pretty sure you can control it without doing that, but I'm not going to get into it. It's pretty complicated. <laughs> um, but yeah, it could be an easy way to have control of the TV uh, with, with Alexa. But I wouldn't buy it if I'm not solving something. There's, there's no point. Um, so yeah, this was a, a disappointing purchase. I thought maybe they would have the something better than, than Google TV, but no, it's it's bad, but in, in different ways. Um, so I'm going to end uh, my rant uh, now and say goodbye and uh, See you later.